TYT at the Bar is brought to you by our friends at Live Oak Bank. Check them out at liveoakbank.com. So on the way here, I'm looking through Instagram and I see this quote, and you're possibly familiar with it, from Albert Einstein. Quote, I fear the day that technology will surpass our human interaction. The world will have a generation of idiots. And I feel like that this is a conversation that we're often having nowadays, whether or not that social media or technology is aiding society or it is killing society, especially our youth. And of course, there's vast benefits of social media from call to action campaigns and influencing social norm. I think the no hate campaign is a really good example of that. But then again, uh, you see this the other day I was at a coffee shop and I saw a group of four teenagers. And of course, this doesn't uh, represent all of them, but they seemed completely disconnected with human interaction with themselves as well as the waitress that came and visited them. Mm -hmm. So then I do understand this almost like zombie mentality that I never had as a kid. You didn't have cell phones as a kid, did you? Not until like senior year of high school. Me too. Okay, mine, I think mine was freshman year of college. So do you guys think, I mean, of course, we know that it's a double-edged sword. There's benefits and then there's flaws and consequences. But uh, looking back, especially for you, you with social media and everything about it, do you think that your kids, I know that they're young, but are they going to be less interactive in humans? And do you think that that's going to be debilitating yeah. for them? So, well, there's a lot of uh, different takes on it. So first of all, uh, as far as making us dumber, to Einstein's mm -hmm. quote, mm -hmm. In some specific ways, there's no question. Like nobody can add anymore. Right. But yes. that's <laughs> right. But that started with or calculators. Spell checks. Right. Oh no! And then I was like, I can't spell anymore. Like I get sometimes I'm like, oh my god, I have no idea how to spell this easy word because I'm so used to spell check that I'm like, I need it. I'm hooked. I'm addicted to spell check. So so in in some ways it does that to all of us, right? But in terms of being disconnected, it's true. There's so many people. It's uh, it was in the movie Her a little bit, but. Yes. But it's not just that movie, that's futuristic, it's now. Right. Like people walking around like there's like a force field from their phones that's like gotten into their eyes and, and they yeah. can't disengage from it. So uh, yeah, of course I worried about that. I mean, uh, my uh, son is not even four years old and he's addicted to the iPad. Wow. He doesn't know how to speak yet. <laughs> <laughs> he just says more iPad, yeah. right? So yeah, I'm worried about it. On the other hand, of course, without the online world, we couldn't right. have done anything we do here, yeah. and it's so our newsletter doesn't do that well. Yeah, it, so. it's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's funny because it both traps you like that force field that I was talking about, but at the same time, it liberates you. Right. So it's like the the biggest. We need to find a balance, and yeah. how do you find that balance? Yeah. But I think another topic that we always hear um, people discussing and debating is the fact that do we feel that uh, it breeds narcissism? And I think yeah. we can see that on Instagram alone, or Twitter, yeah. or Facebook. So Hold do you up. think Let me that? Take a selfie. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think clearly. To, really fast, I want to go back yeah. to, to your first point, yeah. and and I agree for the most part. Uh, we were at a documentary screening yesterday and I was sitting in the row waiting for, the, for it to start and I looked to my left and I looked to my right and every person I could see in my row had their phone out. Instead of talking, um, getting yeah. to know the person next in to you. In their defense, they were sitting next to me. But, um, <laughs> but I do want to play devil's advocate though because naturally when we're comparing what's happening today, the, the context we're comparing it to is maybe the 90s or the 80s or maybe the 70s or something like that. But the I way like he's like maybe the seventies, maybe, <laughs> maybe, but probably the nineties. Right. Okay. But the way that people interacted in the nineties, eighties, and seventies is not the way humans always have. I mean, if you were to like talk to people who grew up in nineteen fifteen, they'd say, "Well, you guys, you talk on the phone a little bit, but do you really spend much time together? Like, you you don't live with your family. Your grandparents live apart or in a home. They used to live all on the same roof. Like, you live in a community of forty people, and those are the only forty people you'd know for your entire." Your life for much of human experience, your tribe, and you'd know everything about them. You'd share possessions, you'd share mates in some cases, you'd mm. share right. the responsibility of bringing up children. The 80s are very different from that. Is it as big a gap as from the 80s to today? That I don't know, but I think that everything, it's been changing for a long time, and I don't think we should be too scared about right. the most recent changes. You know, the same exact thing we were talking about, about the two different sides of it, right? It, on the one hand, in the old days, before even radio, what they would do is they would sit around and, and the family would just talk to one another, right. like, because that's all the entertainment they had, and that's they would crazy. tell stories to one another. <laughs> I know, right? But these days, like, it really seems like, really, we're gonna spend more than, what, 30 minutes? We're gonna spend an hour? It's about yeah. two hours. Like if you said two hours, like the kids' heads would explode, well, right? Family's on. Right. Yeah. So and but they would spend all night talking to one another. They would read po poetry to one another. They would sing together, right? right? 
The flip side is that, as John said, there's 40 people in a village, and that's the only 40 people you knew. Yeah. Whereas now, we have communities that are all over the world. My sister uh, does Sedef's Corner, and it's about art. She has it on Twitter and other things. And she's a very specific fan of art. Mm -hmm. And like-minded people from all over the world follow her. And she just loves yeah. what she does, and she puts it out that's there, right. and other people who love it found her. And they right. found their own community, and they would have never been able no. to find it otherwise. Absolutely. There's definitely a lot of benefits. And I think, you know, when I when I try to think about the solution, and again, I look at, you know, when I become, an, become a mom, and, and I look at my nieces and nephews, I think it really needs to fall on the parents, because this is a new era. This is a new medium, and I think there needs to be balance, and I think, you know, we see, most importantly in the news nowadays, uh, you can look at someone's social media. I, the first person that's coming to my mind is the um, Elliot Rogers, the kid from the Santa Barbara shooting. You see that if, if his social media was canvassed, Prior, if the police would have, when they went and searched his apartment and saw his YouTube video or took that YouTube video seriously or were more aware of it, you can kind of see the symptoms of somebody that may yeah. be suffering from a mental illness or you can just completely, you need to just, I guess what I'm trying to say is you need to monitor your kid's social yeah. media. And I think there has, there is a balance, but there's not. I think a lot of the, the older generation is afraid to understand this new medium that they're not aware of. And I think that's really hurting our younger generation. And that concerns me as an aunt and as a parent. Right. But you know, that's you, interesting. Future parent. I'm right. Not. I was going to say, oh, <laughs> is there something I didn't know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Future parent. Okay. Yeah. It's the other side of that, too, though. On the other hand, you know, when uh, you. I don't want the government looking into our social media yes, to get to that. find pre-crimes. I right? agree with that 100%. Right. Yeah. And as far as a parent is concerned, I'm, I'm a parent now. Now, my kids are too young for me to really do that. But God, you know, I, I don't know. It bothers me in my gut that, that I feel like it's like an invasion of their privacy to, to look at their social media. You're going to have to. You're going to have to. I know that yeah. you have to at least have the dialogue with them. If they're really into a specific website or if they're, I mean, obviously you're not going to let them be on Facebook all day long or whatever the new social media site of that day will be. But I, I feel like as parents, you have to understand what they're obsessed with. I mean, look at, I mean, Snapchat is, Snapchat is a year yeah. ago, but. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, Snapchat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you need to be aware of these yeah. things, and I think that you need to monitor. I yeah. personally think that that's really detrimental. If I was yeah. a, a kid, I would hope that my parents would help me gravitate towards that, because as a, as a young kid nowadays, too, you can really get yourself in hot water by, you know, just thinking that, oh, I'll send them a little, uh, it doesn't even have to be a nude shop, but maybe you in your bikini or you in your bra and underwear, and that can really haunt you for a long time. And if you were to have that conversation that. with your parents, <laughs> and they were more involved with this new medium. I mean, I'm sure you, you parents monitor television 20 years ago. You mm -hmm. need to do that with social media too, personally. But there's lots of benefits. Don't get me wrong. As a but, business yeah. owner, and you know, with the Young Turks, I mean, I can't. We would never be where we are today yeah, without Lee and Michelle on Twitter. Like, there's huge <laughs> benefits every day. <laughs> and also, it's easy, I think, to like humans today are not the same as they were 20 or 30 years ago. I mean, in terms of what is femininity? What is masculinity? We're, we're different. Yeah. You know, in some ways, we're sort of infantilized. We don't develop. Is there, like my father at 18 or my grandfather at 18 were running businesses and had three kids and they were fixing their car. Our 18-year-olds can't do that stuff anymore. So we're different in some way. But I have a feeling if you took some of this modern technology and you put it back 100 years ago, like I think like a sailor would use tw uh, Tinder or something like that. Or if you had a 4K TV, I think our great grand or grinder. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, I think Tinder, you can do the same things you can on Grinder. I think. I, maybe. Um, John, if, okay. <laughs> I don't actually use it. But no, you know, no, no, of course you, not. No, neither yeah. do I. Yeah. And if you, like, friend, porn then or something like that. Like, my great grandfather would have loved some online porn. Like, they would have fallen, I think, to for the same reason we do to these modern technologies and the interconnectivity and things like that. I think that we have to deal with it. The, the thing that scares me, though, is I think that the human being, the human organism can adapt to a lot, but it requires time. And the rate of technological pro progress doesn't really allow that. Right. And so it might That's be a great that we, point. That's a great point. It might be that we can catch up in 100 years, but we're going to be on Twitter 5 at that point, and we're going to be direct mind linking to each other. And maybe that's going to cause some Elliot Rogers or cause people to go insane or lead to higher rates of depression or things like that, because we're not ready for it right now. Well, so, we also need a big time mental health care reform and break down yeah. that stigma. And then hopefully we can uh, 
prevent those Elliot Rogers from happening. Yeah. So you were mentioning Snapchat, and I, oh, you know, okay. Okay, so you I'm back to Snapchat. Story? No, yeah, I'm no, no. I'm gonna send you one right now. No, but seriously, I feel the ship has sailed. Like it's already too late. Yeah. Because every young person I talk to, they're like, okay, Grandpa. Like, yeah, sure, I shouldn't send completely naked pictures of myself. Like they all, I feel like they all do it. What? But okay. It, but isn't that a good thing then? If what? they're all doing, then the, the stigma has to go away eventually. Just like you know, it used to be risque so to have no tattoos. Blackmail. Oh well, I have yours too. Exactly. So, no, yeah. I've said for a long time. Probably on the common room when you, when you were there. What we should do is all get together and have Naked Day, where we all post a naked photo of ourselves. Everybody in the world. Remember then you Sam? Won't care. That's great. That's Remember great. Sam when John pulled you to the corner and, and asked. Said, we should have naked day together. Really, yeah. we should. We've missed like seven <laughs> naked days. Oh my no, god! It's like it's like nude beaches in France. Nobody cares about You're titties right. after a little while. Mm -hmm. But it's all risque well, here downside. because we don't see it. <laughs> if every woman went topless in two weeks, we wouldn't care anymore. Right We'd go back that. to watching TV. And okay. you know, you were talking about how your grandparents would have done the same things. And then I had this vision of my grandparents on Snapchat, and I was like, no. Grandma. No. So finally, uh, uh, we're going to end it with this. Your stance on selfies. John, are you one okay, to take so selfies? Okay, I, I, I have lately. Uh, really? So for a very long time, I thought it was incredibly narcissistic and vain and unnecessary. Am I wrong to think that? Well, I still think, okay, there, selfies, you can do a lot of different types of selfies. I think that if you do a full solo selfie, right. that is still kind of narcissistic I and vain. Agree. If you're just in your car, sorry, Anna, or if you're just <laughs> getting ready, or if you're in an elevator, maybe that is a little bit too far. But sometimes you don't have somebody to take the picture. I took a selfie before we started this I with three people. I think in a group people. setting, it's okay. Yes. yes. First, okay, yes, let's clarify. Group selfies, totally Group fine. selfies are 100% okay. I agree. And in fact, are good. Like, it captures the moment. Right. It's fun for everybody, okay. Uh, I used to bust Anna's chops too much about her Me selfies, too. right? I didn't know that but she had a selfie fascination. No, not she really. Doesn't. We, we no. exaggerate. Yeah, we you're exaggerate. exaggerating. Because yeah, I yeah. look at her Instagram and I follow her. I don't see too many. No, no. Okay, okay. No, partly because I busted her chops so much, she stopped <laughs> taking all of them, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, she's scared of cameras now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think that it's okay as long as you don't overdo it. Right. So, like, some people's Instagrams, you, you follow them, and you're like, do you have a non-selfie? Like, like yeah. non-stop selfie. Food picture. Yes. Something. Yeah. Right. Please. Although yeah. I do have to say, I, I don't always know exactly why I'm on certain social media sites. Like, like uh, for instance, Instagram. Like, I t try to take a picture every couple of days because I feel some sort of obligation. But the reason I go on there is because th there's actually a lot of very attractive fans of the Young Turks who take a lot of selfies, and it's a nice little distraction during the Interesting. day. Interesting. Oh. Okay, we just learned a lot about John. Okay. All right. Okay. So keep uploading them. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Can we end on that note?